Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we used the previous video's tile creation to update our tiles in real time using scriptable objects. In this video, we will use those scriptable object themes and add decoration or foliage objects to the theme so that you can use a fill rate to fill your screen in with an assortment of different sprites. All right. To get started, we will create a new object, we'll call it, or a new class. We're going to call it cell decoration object because I would call it cell foliage object, but what if we want to place like a building or something? That's not exactly foliage, so we'll call it cell decoration. Feel free to call it whatever you want though. We'll actually call this tile decoration object because it goes better with our tile theme object. So we'll just change this to say tile. We'll go back into Unity. We'll change our file name to say tile after it's done compiling. Let it compile again. Reopen this file. We'll make it a scriptable object. We need the create asset menu. We'll call this one a new decoration for the file name. Then the menu name will be tiles slash decoration. We can get rid of the start and the update. Within here, we'll just have a public sprite. This will be the sprite decoration that we wish to spawn onto the screen. Then we'll have the height of this decoration. Now we'll go into our tile theme object. We need to make it have an array of tile decorations. We'll call it decorations. Now that we have our tile decoration object and our tile theme object, we can go into our cell. We'll update the update tile to say update tile theme. Now instead of taking in a sprite, it'll take in a tile theme object. We'll name it theme. <laughs> then it'll take a float for the fill rate. We'll default it to 0.5f, putting a single equal sign in a function name or a function call will make it default to 0.5f so you don't actually need to put this fill rate variable. You can just pass the theme and then fill rate will be 0.5f, but if you do pass a second variable of 1, it will override 0.5f to be 1. Now that we've done that, we will set a variable in our object called public tile theme object. We'll call it theme. We'll set the theme to the theme that we brought in. Then we'll set the renderer dot sprite. to be equal to the theme dot tiles. Then we'll use utils dot get tile. Using the X and the Y that we stored on the variable earlier when the object was created, we will get the correct tile that we need based off the theme that we passed in. Then when we update the tiles, we want to have a decoration object on the tile. Now, there's two ways you could go about doing this. You could have an array or list of sprites if you want, say, a tiny object underneath a larger object, say maybe some rocks and then have a tree on top of your rocks. But I think for my project, I'll just make it to where you can have one decoration per tile. Now before we add the decoration to the object, we need to fix our public cell to set theme to a variable when the game starts. 
So we'll remove this sprite sprite and instead we'll pass a tile decoration object or a tile theme object I mean. We'll name it theme and then we'll simply set theme with a capital T is equal to theme. And now instead of saying render.sprite equals sprite, we'll say the same thing we have here. Now we want to create a new cell decoration. The cell decoration will hold a tile decoration object and a few other things. We can just create this within the same class as our cell. It's probably better to create it in its own class, but we're just going to put it inside of here. We're going to store a bool for whether or not the cell has a cell decoration created or not. We'll call it is created. We'll have a game object to store the game object that is instantiated when we create a decoration onto the cell. Then we'll want to store the sprite renderer also. And then we will also store the tile decoration object that this tile is using. Actually, I don't think we'll need to store that. If it turns out we will do need to store it, we'll add it later, but I don't think we need to actually store it. It, it would make sense to, but I, well, I'm just going to not do it for now. So let's set up our constructor. We're going to need to pass the prefab that we wish to instantiate. Then the tile decoration object that we wish to use, we'll call it decoration then the int x that the, and the y that this cell decoration will be placed on in the grid. Which we may not have to store that either, but at some point we may want to see what the x and the y of the decoration is, so we'll, we'll store it just in case. And then we'll set a, if we want to set the parent of the object, we'll have that but we'll default it to null, so if we don't push this last variable, it won't have a parent. Doing this is because setting a parent, like I said in a previous video, setting the name of an object is more performant heavy, and it's more for debug stuff, unless your code actually depends on the hierarchy of the objects in your scene, it's better to have a single hierarchy of objects, because having to look through the children of an object is extra time that you don't need to waste on processing. But while editing or debugging or creating the game, it's easier to have a clean hierarchy and a clean inspector. So we'll parent it while making the game. So we'll, that's why we'll have that set up is that like that. Let's set up these variables. So game object will be equal to game object dot instantiate we're instantiating the prefab. We want to place it at grid to world position, x, y, a rotation of zero. And since we do want to parent it, we'll do parent. We'll set the name also so we know the position of the name or the object. We can just copy and paste this to save a little time. Then we'll set the renderer, which we can copy and paste this. We need to set the sprite to the decoration. So renderer.sprite will be equal to decoration.sprite then is created is true because we just created a decoration so we'll set the bool to true. Now we'll have a function in the cell decoration for updating the decoration tile. We'll call it public void update tile. It's going to pass in a tile theme object called theme and this will if the tile has a renderer then the renderer dot sprite will be equal to theme.decoration 
and we'll pick a random theme from the or a random decoration from the theme that we are currently using or the theme that we passed in the update tile which is the theme that we are currently using so random dot range zero to theme dot decoration dot length and since random dot range was with an int is exclusive we do not need to add a minus one then we'll say dot sprite our cell decoration is set up now we need to go into our grid manager and fix the current errors that we have how we updated it we just need to pass themes current theme so remove the tile update on this that got rid of our current errors let's go back into the unity editor and create some decoration objects we'll go into assets create a new folder call it decorations go into that folder create tiles decoration we'll call this one a tree the sprite that we'll use is a tree sprite, which we will find right here. We'll use this tree for now, and we'll give it a height of one, which at the current moment, height is not going to be used, but if we want to use it at a later time, we'll already have it set up. And this will let you know how to use variables onto the object. Now, if you try to access this variable and change it during the game, it's going to be changing it for every tile that's using this scriptable object. So you have to store the updated data on the cell decoration C sharp file that we created and not the tile decoration object. That's why we have this and this. But Let's create a few more decorations. We have a tree. Let's create a rock. Then we'll also create a cactus and a flower. On the cactus, we'll set the cactus sprite. We'll give it a height of one. Give your rock a height of one. And the flower will have a height of 0.5. Oh, we just go back into your script and your cell decoration, your tile decoration object, change this to a float. Now we can set this to 0.5. Find your sprite for a flower. Pick a flower that you like. I'll use the middle flower. Now that we have our decoration set up, we can go back into our themes folder. Our desert will use a rock and a cactus. Our forest will use a flower and a tree. We don't exactly have decoration objects for our water, so I guess we just won't set. I, I suppose we'll put some on there just to see how it works. We'll put all four of them on here. How about that? It's going to look weird, but why not? It'll just show you that it works. I believe we have all of the script done. Did we forget anything? I do not think so. It should all be set up. Ah, we are forgetting something. We don't have anything actually setting the... We're not creating the cell decoration onto an object at any actual time. So to do that, we need an addDecoration function, a clearDecoration function, 
and then in the constructor we need to set up whether or not it should have a decoration. So let's create our add decoration function public void add decoration then we'll say if there is no decoration Ah, so we did need to store the decoration earlier. So let's store the decoration. Then we'll say decoration is equal to a new cell decoration. And then in here, if decoration is not created, we will create a new decoration using a the prefab that we used before because it's still just a tile so we can actually use the same prefab so we can store the prefab object onto the cell so the cell decoration can use it there's probably better ways to do this but we're, we're just going to do it this way we'll make it a read only game object prefab and then we'll just store it prefab. We'll give it a capital P so it's not interfering with this prefab. Make sure this P is capitalized. Now down here we can pass the prefab. Then we'll use the theme dot decorations. We'll pick a random object. So random dot range between zero and theme.decorations.length. Then we need to pass in the X and the Y and the game object.transform. Now we need a function for clearing the decoration. And this will do game object dot destroy decoration dot game object. And then we'll say decoration equals new cell decoration. That'll destroy the decoration stored on the current decoration and then override the cell decoration struct with a new cell decoration with everything empty and is created set back to false. Now when the cell is constructed, we need to decide whether or not this cell should have a decoration object or not. And to do that, we are going to go back into our utils folder and we're going to create another function that looks just like this, but it's just going to be returning true or false for if it is an edge tile or if it isn't an edge tile. So this one just needs to return true and then the rest of them need to return false. We'll rename this to is edge tile. Now going back into cell, we can say if it is not an edge tile, because we are only going to spawn decorations if it is not an edge tile. Then a random range between 0 and 1, if that random range is greater than 0 0.5, will spawn a new decoration. Alright, let's go back into our Unity project, wait for it to compile. Click on your grid manager, make sure everything is set up correctly. Click play and let's see what happens. We, we only have objects spawning on the edge, so we must have forgot to detect or put our explanation. Oh, <laughs> we, 
We're returning false on this and then true on this when we actually need to be returning true on these and false on the other one. So let's just switch this around real quick. Go back into your Unity project and click play again. This bottom row is not working correctly. Did we forget to do one or what, what did we do wrong there? Oh, we forgot one. And there we go. If we push space, you'll see that it updates to the other cell decorations, but it is not updating the tiles. So we obviously forgot some code. Let's go back into our code and see if we can find what we forgot. So when we update the tile theme, we need to also update the tile decoration. If we, after setting the, the theme and the renderer.sprite to the new themes renderer.sprite, we need to clear the decoration. And then if it is not an edge tile and the random range is greater than the fill rate that we are using, we'll make a new decoration. So utils dot is edge tile x y capital x capital y and random dot range 0 0.0 f 1.0 f is greater than 0 0.5 f or my bad fill rate we'll add a decoration now we'll go into our grid manager and we're going to copy and paste this three times. We'll change this to a Q, a W, and an E. And we can put on our update tile theme, we'll put a fill rate. We'll pass the fill rate into the update tile theme. Then we need to add the fill rate that we want to use on these. We'll use 0.25F, 0.5F, and 0.9F. Go back into your Unity project and click play. So you'll notice that only half the tiles seem to be spawning, but if you actually look in your hierarchy and scroll down, it seems like tiles are spawning all the way to the end. But if you look over it, the tile is not visible. But if you go to the order and layer, change it to a 1, the tile shows up. This is just a Z-fighting issue that we forgot to take care of in code. Going back into your code, you can go into your cell decoration. When the cell is created, or the cell decoration is created, we can simply set the renderer's sorting order to 1. Now if you go back into your Unity project and click play, you should see that everything is working as expected. If we go back into our code, we can clean this up a little bit by putting this over index, remove index from this, and then take all of these off of here. We can go back into our code and see that the project still works as expected. Pushing Q, it gives us a fill rate of 0 0.9. Pushing W gives us a fill rate of 0 0.5. And pushing E gives us a fill rate of 0 0.25. Or the opposite of what I said. So pushing Q is a fill rate of 0 0.25 chance to not place an object. W 0.5 chance of not placing an object, 
E, a 0.9 chance of not placing an object. That's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed this series of how to place objects on a 2D array and update the objects using scriptable object themes. Have a wonderful day and I hope you'll join me in our next video.